Shekhar, thanks for being with us today. Um, Rosian Kutayer, Member of Parliament, distinguished guests, organizational leaders, maiden crew, young sailors. We have our young sailors here with us today. If they come, come along, you're welcome to join. Maiden, please. So, firstly, to have a head of state with us today is an honor. We are humbled by Her Excellency's presence. But if there is something which we were certain before making our request, we were certain that we have a president who embodies the very values which we are trying to bring across. So, our ex Her Excellency was our first, the first person whom we thought automatically. So I think um, this is very appropriate as we are proceeding. Um, Charles de Gaulle in 1958 said, that the president is l'esprit de la nation. In our case, I think that we have a president who embodies the heart of the nation. And today I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, not only for being here, but especially for having, for the past five years, been the president with the qualities that you have. I would like to thank you, and it's an applause which I'd like to make because Today, I'll be the first speaker, but I'm gonna, I'm here on behalf of the two founders of the two foundations which I represent, which is the Jarhead Young Sailors Foundation and the Oldman Foundation. And I am speaking on, on behalf of the two founders, Mr. Gregory Nesmith and Ms. Samantha Robedo. They are both in Sydney right now doing the, the Sydney Hobart race and they're doing very well. They also sponsored one Maltese young sailor, Daniel Fennec, who is there racing in one of the top world uh, yachting events. So this is an experience thanks to the foundation which this young multi sailor, 18 year old, is having thanks to our benefactors. Um, a very important point is that I'm gonna read literally what Miss Samantha Nesbitt has asked me to read uh, to you in a few minutes. So, this is what Miss Nesbitt has said. Um, our shared aim is to empower and educate girls and so we embrace the chance to be able to assist the yacht maiden with her Malta stop and to share her mission. It was an opportunity which both the Oldman and Jarhead Young Sailors Foundation embraced wholeheartedly. Maiden Stop in Malta has presented a valuable opportunity for the community to learn about Maiden's journey and to lend their support. The response and support from everyone has been beyond our expectations. We are also delighted that we can raise awareness for Maiden's partner charities such as the Orchid Project, which is one of the charities supported by the Maiden Factor Group. Oldman Foundation is funding a social project which is specific. It is related to female genital mutilation, which is a practice which quite frankly when I, before I learned about just two weeks ago, I was shocked. Um, this is actually, maybe one can Google and search what, what, what this is about. Um, when uh, the, the consequences of such a procedure which is still happening in this day and age is uh, very serious. It can lead to HIV infections and it's a whole, even psychologically it's a trauma. And the Orchid Foundation, which Ms. Samantha is, uh, is supporting, is running a campaign worldwide to try to eradicate this, this practice. So this is one of the goals of the Oldman Foundation. The last two points. So Ms. Nazmet concluded that the empowerment and education of girls and women is at the heart of both foundations. So we look forward to Maiden's return in 2020. So now in a way from our end, this is not a, a farewell. It's an au revoir. So we hope to see you again in 2020 um, with a second event which further supports this cause. At this point, I'd like to introduce Ms. Lorraine Spiteri, co-chair of Empower.
a stronger voice on issues impacting women in Malta. This umbrella organization, which is called Empower, is a platform which is working to promote positive change and advocate to eliminate barriers to gender equality where there exist. This organization is co-chaired by Stephanie Hudson and by myself. The platform is made up of 17 women organizations coming from all walks of life. The initiative is facilitated and supported by the President's Foundation for the Wellbeing of Society. Empower is devoted to work towards the achievement of full equality for women and men in Malta. No society can say there is full equality when women still suffer violence and harassment because they are born women. No society can say there is full equality when women are continuously underrepresented in political and economic decision making. Empower strongly believes that through education we can achieve this full equality. The day chosen for the actual launch of the platform was the day when we were celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child in October. Why? Because we believe that we need to empower girls from childhood. Girls and boys are brought up into two different worlds with gender stereotypes affecting their decisions and expectations for the future. Girls need to be given the opportunities to flourish, to be able to realize that in life they do have choices. And, they, and this can only happen with the right education and support. So today, together with Her Excellency, the President of Malta, we can only applaud these incredible five women on board the maiden captain. They are true role models. The initiative and objectives to support women's empowerment and girls' education are to be commended. And we are excited to join everyone to bid you farewell, or as Wilfred said, and good luck. And keep up your standing work. Thank you. Introduce Ms. Stephanie Falzon, co chair of Empower and president of BPW Mood, Valletta Mood. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you've just heard, I'm the co chair with Lorraine for Empower, but I'm also the president of BPW Mood. BPW stands for Business and Professional Women. We form part of BPW International, it's one of the largest female organizations and one of the oldest female organizations in the world. We work entirely for the empowerment of young girls and women. Every country is left to work on its own initiative according to the needs of that particular country. To give you a very broad idea, we have BPW Germany working very hard for equal pay, BPW France working for women on board, but then we have countries like BPW Nigeria still fighting for the right of the girl child to go to school, BPW India and Pakistan fighting the culture of rape, and when, when a woman is raped, she is still the guilty party, and she, she is sent away even by her own family. This is just a broad idea of what BPW does all over the world. In Malta, what do we do? Well, in Malta, on paper, we live the dream. The law for equal pay has been there for years. We have uh, free, Healthcare, free education, free childcare. Our, our students go to university, free, free university, and they get a stipend. They get paid to go to university. More women are coming out of university than, than men with better grades. But then we lose them. Where are these women going? In Malta, there is this culture that the family will fall apart if the woman is not there. As BPW Malta, we have started, this, is, this will be the seventh edition, we have started a BPW Careers Day. We invite all 14-year-old girls in Malta to come and meet with women, women have, who have already reached the top of their career, but also women who are still on their way up. This started as a pilot project with one school. The second year it was four schools, seven, eight, Next year, 2019, we're anticipating 1,500 girls, 14-year-olds, 
over 300 women to come and mentor these girls. Next year, we're taking this a little bit further because you know, it is very important to empower young girls, but we really also have to teach the young boys, okay? So this year, although this is, will always remain women talking to the girls, since the schools in Malta are nearly all co now, we were asked, can the boys come? Yes, of course they can come. And it is important now that the boys will come. They are going to talk to women, women, who I, who I have already said they're at the top of their career, and maybe in the future, their boss is going to be a woman, or their wife wants to continue working. These boys have to realize from now that women are capable, they are going to go places, and we, we have to teach them. I also would like to say well done to the crew. I would really love to come with you. <laughs> but, um, and yes, the countries they have mentioned, because you know, we, we, in Malta, we, but these countries, especially India, they really need to broaden their minds. And yes, the women there need education. I wish you well, I wish you a safe trip. Let me see you in two years time. Thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, so as you all know, um, the crew, the four of the four girls and myself um, and the boat are sailing around the world to promote education for young girls and to empower women across the world. To stop in Malta as our first stop has been an absolute pleasure from the moment we arrived until today when we sadly have to leave. Yes, we are going on to more exciting parts, of course, but it has been an absolute dream two weeks. So thank you very much. And I have a, a few specific thank yous to mention. So first of all, to um, the Grand Harbour Marina, where we're standing right now. Um, this, this fabulous team and um, brilliant facilities have made our life so much easier and they have been so warm and welcoming and I would encourage anyone to uh, also use these facilities in the future. Uh, also to Manuel Island, we uh, had a, a small amount of work to do um, and again, the team over there and the facilities were brilliant and really, really helped us get the work done quickly and over Christmas. Uh, to Wilfred, over here for, for helping us and um, connecting us so well to this amazing distinguished panel of women who've joined me on stage today. It's, it's an absolute honour to stand next to you. Thank you very much for your support. Um, and to the Jarhead Foundation for sailing in with us and sailing out with us and really enforcing our message. And it's brilliant to have young women and young boys um, so interested in what we are doing. The, the next generation are how we change the future. And to have 20 young girls and boys on the dock when we arrived at six o'clock at night was just out of this world. Thank you very much. So as, as, uh, as everyone said, au revoir. We will see you in two years. and. Um, Hopefully there's three times the crowd when we arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Your Excellency, please. Thank you. So I, I truly feel that I'm privileged to welcome this wonderful crew, all in this crew. Also, um, excited to have come to know that there is this all women's crew sailing all around the globe to encourage uh, and promote education for all. I think you have chosen the very right moment to do this as we have just commemorated the 70th anniversary of uh, United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. 
which I hope will keep on commemorating and promoting all through the year, the, year, the new year coming. As the opening, the opening to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it's that we are all born free and equal. And definitely we are not. We are, we are not free and equal, not all of us at least. Many of us still left. We have not fulfilled this opening um, phrase to our universal human rights. Also, education is one of the fundamental human rights, which again, after 70 years, we have not as yet fulfilled. In 2015, when the United Nations decided on the United Nations Agenda 2030 and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 4 was dedicated to equality. And SDG 5 was dedicated to education. And that is in itself a certification of how much we have not met the objectives of what 70 years ago our forefathers and foremothers decided upon. So I do believe that the maiden it has come about and will start the journey at a very appropriate time because we need to take initiatives. As Stephanie has said, we have practically in this country most of our human rights on paper, right to education and free education. Yes, we pay our young people at university to stay in education, to help the families, to ensure that our young people have an university education. However, we still lack effectively women representation, though there is quite the political will to put things in place. And we do hope and do, we do continue to urge our authorities to take the necessary steps together with the legislation in place because we have excellent legislation, legislation in this country. However, we need a practical um, infrastructure to put um, women's participation in quality in, in, in its full, effective um, approach. However, even though we still urge, discuss, campaign for what is still needed in Malta, we are, we are very much aware of what is happening across the globe and that there are quite a number of countries, unfortunately, haven't as yet reached the basic ob objectives. And when one remembers that there are about 130 million of girls that are denied education. That is something which should not make us sleep at night, not one of us. Then when we, when then we look at scientific research by international institutions, for example, like UNESCO, who have said that 39 million girls aged 11 to 15 are not in lower secondary school. And they have asked, so where are the adults and girls? And the answers to this study is that one in seven is married by the age of 15. Up to half of all girls in developing countries are mothers before they turn 18. And if the present trends, the study continues to say, more than 100 million girls will probably be married as children in the next decade. So this is the context that Maiden will be saying. To save as many of these children as possible. We need to be aware, we need to promote, we need to urge, we need, we need Maiden, initiatives like Maiden, to urge the international community to do much more, much, much more. There is also a UN Women study, which was published in 2015, that speaks of what happens if girls had the opportunity to have 12 years of education and the effects, that is, girls will, will have access to primary and secondary school. And this study actually states, says, that if girls have 12 years of education, then childhood marriages would fall by 64%. Early births 
would fall by 59%. Child deaths under five would fall by 49%. And the jobs of girls and women will be job and wage potential increases. The health, wealth, and happiness or of the families will increase. The spread of HIV and AIDS will be reduced. The socioeconomic status of the entire community will increase. The eradication of wealth poverty will become possible. Gender equality would increase dramatically. So really, I must commend the skipper and, and the team of, of sailors for taking up, for being brave, because you are brave. Going around the world, it, it, you might, it might, sailing might be your passion. However, to be at sea for two whole years is really more than just a passion for sailing. It is a commitment. It is bravery. You're being courageous. Thank you for standing up in this way for all of us. I, I wouldn't say like Stephanie, I would like to join you because I love rough sea, seeing it from the shore, I can tell you, I'm quite seasick. So I really admire what you do in this context. And I do hope that your statement will be picked up by the international community. I would like also to command all those foundations and organizations that have believed in your cause and are supporting you. You have quite a lot of support in this, I can tell you. Because there are a lot of women out there. I mean, Stephanie and Loren are actually representing about 17 women organizations. Because of our um, brings together about 17 women organizations. But we need also in this country to have much, much more and support for women initiatives and initiatives that are addressing because this is what you're doing. You're addressing this global democratic deficit that the world unfortunately still has. So while I will give you a successful journey, we'll be waiting really wholeheartedly to see you in 2020 and also to measure the outcomes. I think we would need to measure outcomes so that and when we measure outcomes, we also identify any other great areas to encourage others to, be, to take up initiatives to address those. But we will be with you morally and spiritually, and we will be praying for you to, so that your out, outreach would be maximized as much as possible. Thank you. a better finish to this press conference. Um, the next will be a group photo together with Her Excellency, so I will soon invite everybody here. Um, uh, we will have a reception on the terrace right behind you at Cargo, so you are most welcome to join us please. There is a good reception there waiting for you. The farewell will be at 12 noon approx. We might be delaying by a few minutes. But um, we have some spaces left for people who would like to join us on the accompanying boats. We have two, two yachts which will accompany a maiden out of harbour. So um, please speak to Daniela, where are you? There she is, if anybody would like to join on the boats. The press have a specific press boat together with Robert here. If you can make a sign, Robert, please. Hi. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, I'd like to thank our main sponsors for today's event, which is Transport Malta. Okay, that's Transport Malta. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sabrina. Uh, Melita Marine as well. They were very helpful and immediately gave, gave us support. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Pierre Balsam, who's always very helpful with charitable events. Sail Drive Charters with Mr. Edward Saida. Uh, the Marketing Concept, which is Daniela. She has helped us voluntarily. And Cargo Restaurant Burgo. So that is in a nutshell. So shall we go for the group photo?